All right, Nick. Here we go. Thanks to Nick Martini, we get to get ourselves in a position where... Here we go. Not quite in midseason form yet, are we? We're getting there. Where? We're getting close. I think you also <laughs> might have us uh, loud somewhere. Is that a real thing? Yeah, it won't go away. <laughs> it's our first time we've ever done this. I don't know how to turn it off. It's, it's in a tab. It's in a tab. It's in. A, it, just relax. You you look at you look at look. Let's uh, let's let's all watch Nick look everywhere. He's just right, left, up, down. You look at you look at look. Let's uh, let's, let's all watch. How about we just mute the uh, the other computer? That seems like okay. probably a, the way to go. Fine. Fair enough. Fair enough. I got my. I got. I got the chat. I got. There's a lot of things going on. Um, Diaz just walked a guy on four pitches. So there's that. <laughs> I don't want this to happen the very first time out. All right. There we go. All right. No, that's not the right bottom bar. There we go. All right. Strikes. Strikes for likes or likes for strikes. One of them. Hopefully that's just Alexis's uh, token walk and you can figure it out. This guy's been this guy has been bad for everybody, okay? Can we can we at least agree there? We all we all understand the umpiring situation has not been the best, but he's been pretty bad consistently. Well with C B Buckner's behind the plate, you're not expecting greatness. Had a, I've had a uh, a rough. Now, I wouldn't say a rough day, but I've had a tough day, very really tough day. I had to set up a, a basketball goal outside. One of the pieces wasn't uh, right, so it was supposed to be done within a two hours. It took like six. Alex Wallace is uh, reporting live from GABP. Is he? He's like probably like 20 minutes ahead of us. Yeah, he is. Don't ruin it, Alex. That's why I forgot about that. I can't pay attention to the chat because uh, they're inevitably way ahead of us. Good news is, is I put my television to the opposite side of the chat this time. Smart move. That's 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 how that helps. Now. What do you think about that whole uh, runner indifference right there? I guess we don't care because clearly we don't want to, we don't want Winker to rip one down the line and get a double when he otherwise would have just been out. But could also have got a double playing into the game too. So I don't think Winker hits a lot of ground balls though. Yeah, it's, it's a smart he, move. He doesn't, he's a, he doesn't hit the ball much at all. It's a smart move to play off. Damn, well, the ball's there he is. <laughs> right on cue. As a, that was a hit. Never easy. Never easy. All right, I updated the score. I'm on yep. top of something. Very nice. We're back. I wouldn't say that yet. <laughs> Not sure we're going to get a great box score recap, though. I'll save that for the podcast tomorrow. Yeah, what I what I was getting at there before I got distracted by the DS uh, walking guys and giving up hits was that I I've not seen every inning of this game. I did see some what what I think are pretty important parts of the game though. I, I seen some drop five pop ups, fly balls, pop ups, both. If they can hang on, this would just be uh, yeah, your, survive your classic, in advance. Your classic ugly, ugly win. Yeah, just horrific. Not a very good game. Daniel Wade, thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Daniel. Just trying to... St now... Now... Is he going to run again? Is he going to waste a pitch out? Double play. What? Is that not a double play? Like, where are they at? Where Where are they at? Oh. Where are they at, Nick? Where are they at, Nick? That's a weak ground that. ball. That ball is hit 
40 miles an hour. Where is he at? How is that not a double play? He's a full pool hitter. He's a... Oh, yeah. Here we go. Let me (laughs) go ahead. Convince me. Game was over. I just want everybody to know. Game was over. The game was over. Oh, Joey Gallo. I need a strikeout. Made a perfect pitch. He made a perfect pitch. Got the guy to stick his butt out, roll over a ground ball. Ah! Candelario's pretty spirited out there. (sighs) All right, we're not dead yet, though. Oh yeah, Candelario's giving Diaz like a full pep talk okay, out there. His eye, I mean, I'm all for it. He's he's ripping. I don't know if he's ripping his. I don't know if he's ripping his tail, or if it was, it was like a positive. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, we 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 don't want to. We'll just let him take second. He's not a big deal. I mean, I, where are we at in the lineup? Do you just walk Gallo at this point? Yeah, uh, yeah. You I mean, walk Ruiz Gallo. Has, Ruiz no, the, the, the only hits. reason, the only like, reason, I, I would the, rather Ruiz beat me than Gallo. The only argument for the only argument for not walking him would be that he is that Diaz is walking guys yeah, left and right, yeah. and then you're going to walk in a run. But I'll take my chances on a lucky double play. I don't think Ruiz is very fast either. Now I know. Listen, I'm. I know that everyone's gonna crush uh, Diaz. I get it. I understand. I'm not even suggesting that he doesn't warrant a little bit of of. But he did in 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 a perfect world. He did his job. I just want everyone to know he did his job. Like he got a ground ball for a double play. We the, the, there just wasn't anybody there. We'd all be cheering. We wouldn't even be talking about Diaz right now. We'd be talking about how he shut the door. All right. Positive vibes. Likes, people. Need them fast. Oh, he hit him. It hit him. Come on. It hit. It hit him. I seen it in real time. It hit him. Hit him. That's a, that's a that's a hit by pitch. Oh, hit the jersey. Yep. I seen it in real time. All right. Um. Well. I hate that we all felt this too. I hate that we all felt like this was possible. I, I don't want to be right in these situations. All right, where are we at? Eddie Rosario. This would be left on left if they if they keep Rosario, but I think Suter has reverse splits though. So I don't think this is necessarily like a great interesting if they let Rosario hit here or not. I yeah. Think that's on that us, would- chat. That's on us. We'll fix it. We were locked in. We were locked in. I, I'll, I I got it. It's nobody's fault. I'll there. Oh, there. You want that? Do you want that chat? Is that will that make you feel better about yourself? I'll tell you. It doesn't make me feel any better. But we should do it. It's there for a reason. We'll do it. We'll do it because that's what we're supposed to. Do. Mm. 
All right. Hey guys, we're going to do something together here. I understand we're all mad at, we're all, we're all upset. We want to blame somebody right now, but David Bell is not the guy. Okay. That's not the guy. Uh, at some point you have a guy that has done a lot for you. You don't just pull him. You got to give him a chance. I understand. Like it is what it is. They got to execute. They got to execute. You bring Diaz in, it's his job to close the door. Uh, that's part of it. All right, Suter. Get lucky and get a double play. Mm, that's too deep. It's too deep. Throw it to third. That's a good pitch. Throw too. it to third. Good. Yep. All right, well, where are we at when we come back around? I don't even know. All right. Ellie made the last out. So we got Stu, Maley, and Benson. I'm assuming... Fraley gets somewhere in there. Oh, Fra no, Fraley came in to play defense. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Nice job, Suter. Nice yeah. job, man. Good as he could have done. Yeah. All right. I mean, you know how piss poor you got to be to blow a two-run lead to the Nationals. Save, I should say. You got to walk great. guys and hit guys. It's one thing if they beat you, but... The walks, man, they just... I, I just... What? What was... What was... I, I was... We were going live... Bubba Thompson remained in the game as a designated hitter. So Bubba Bubba came in to run for India. Okay. Yes. And, but then he, well, man, that's just that's a that's tough because he brought in Fraley to um to play right field. He moved guys around, but shouldn't he have just left Martini in to play right field? Then he'd have Fraley available. I mean, I know he's not expecting Diaz to blow the game, but like you'd want Fraley to hit in this inning. Like, Fraley's literally just going to only be a defensive player in this game if the Reds don't come back. Yeah, I don't... Is Martini that bad of a defender? Yeah, I don't... <sighs> yeah. There's really no way. Like, it, it, you know, I already know how this is going to go if... If you get too over the top about it, you get this, you get really upset. You're going to get the, oh, you're not built for 162, 162, 162, all that bull, you know what? And they all matter, man, especially against teams that are this bad. Can you imagine playing this bad and having a chance to win? Yeah, yeah, they did not, this has not been a, a well horrible. played game. I mean, they've just played horribly. Face the facts. Crazy thing yeah, no, is, I mean, is that the crazy thing is is like two of the errors are they're called hits. So when you look back at this game, you're gonna be like, well, they, 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 you know, they didn't make as many errors in the field as people. I mean, I don't know. All right, Stu. No. No. All right, well, that was fast. Oh, 
Yeah, but I think they blew a lot of their saves earlier in the year, and those 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 two guys pitched pretty well at the, the back end. I don't think they were that bad at the end of the year. Yeah, I just don't. I mean, there's a million things that come back through my mind. Can't catch pop ups. Can't throw strikes. Shout out to the green screen, though, and the diamond seats for Penn Station right now. No free ads, but I'm giving them one. They might they might want to consider keying out the green screen, though, for next game. <laughs> Just a thought. Let's make him throw a strike here, Maley. Okay? Let's make him throw a strike, big boy. Let's not chase. Find a way on base. Please, ball. All right. Stay alive. Yeah. There's nobody on the bench. How about that? Let's just leave it at that. There's one guy. (laughs) But he can't. He literally can't come off the bench because you can't. I mean, who's going to catch, you know? Stay in the zone, Luke. Come on, buddy. Strikes. Is there any chance you could just get a, get get me all the way back to uh Get out of here. Go. Go ball. Somebody smack him. What what are you doing in the front row? <laughs> There's nets there. I don't give a damn. I'm pushing his arms if it's break, close enough. Break through him. <laughs> Rip him apart. I'm not ripping apart. I'm just giving a nice, friendly, like you know, sh- sh- I'm I'm staying vertical, like they teach you in the paint. Stay vertical. <laughs> He's not leaning up against that net. I got a feeling this is a ball, and I don't want him to swing at it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good at bat by Luke, by the way. Let's just, can we all give it up? Yeah. Good at bat by He's Luke. Fighting. He's fighting. He's Let's battling. Go. Come on, babe. Good take. That was a great take. Unbelievable take. That was a great take. All right. All right, Will. Logan Smith says he's the best backup catcher in the league. I would venture to say... I have to do a little more research on that. I don't know. Is he a backup? Is he a backup? <laughs> Logan? I don't know. Some are asking. Is he a backup? he's going to play two out of every five games. I think he's going to catch Green and Abbott. And I think Stevenson's going to catch the other three. Will Maley caught do it. it every game last year. Do it, Will. He's just throwing nothing but change ups. Is 
Zadak trying to manifest I it. I like it. I love Zadak for that. <sighs> Good pitch. And then here we go. Bubba Thompson. Oh, to Tyler Stevenson. You think you, you think that that's what they'll do? Yeah, that's what game day showing me is Tyler Stevenson's going. Oh, really? Okay. All right. So you're yeah. telling. <laughs> you're not. You're not. This isn't a suggestion. I'm not this that is, smart. Is, I'm not that smart. I'm well, that I, I I just didn't know if they would do that based off the fact that you know. I mean, uh, what do you what do you have to lose at this point? I mean, I don't know. You buy the game. Yeah, and then you just I guess at that point, yeah, you just. <laughs> I mean, if you don't get it on base here, the game's over. So I get it. Disgusting. What a disgusting thing. Mm. Mm. One more hop. Throw it away. Safe. I want to see it. Are we allowed to see that still, Nick? Are we allowed to see yeah, that I still? I want to see it. I want to see it. He's out. Yeah, he's out. Man. Whew. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to make uh, an executive decision here. I'm going to mute us. I'm going to figure out where that intro starts at, where we where we have our old school intro. If we lose baseball games, we'll play that. It, we're we're going to play that intro. But I got it. You, you're going to have to give me a second to figure out where that is. My heart's a little broken right now, so I'm going to need a rally in the next two minutes, all right? Give me one second. I know we're not in midseason form. I'm well aware of it, and you know who else isn't in midseason form? Alexis Diaz. Welcome into Chatterbox Reds, a losing edition. Nick, first one of the season. Turns out the Reds aren't going to go 162 and 0. But I, I got to be honest, I'd be lying if I didn't think they were going to start 2 and 0 about 45 minutes ago. Uh, they lose seven to six. I guess we'll. Uh, First, I'll do what I always do. I'll ask you how you're doing. You're probably like me, not doing great. I'm sure we'll get into the box score recap. 
Yeah, it was an ugly baseball game. You're kind of thinking, no, they're going to find a way just to, to win in this game that's kind of gross, but, you know, you, you find a way to win. And uh, and then, um, you know, Lucas Sims gave up a home run. To Lucas Sims' credit, he didn't walk anyone. Alexis Diaz actually really just hurt himself. So uh, not what you want to see from the back end of your bullpen. Alexis was as good as, it, good as he could be early in the year last year and right off the bat struggles after a, a rough spring. It stinks because it stinks because we've it uh it, it kind of felt like we were and listen it's just one game let me start by saying that but it, it starts to feel like it was a trend and it felt like something we started to feel towards the end of last season and you start to question listen Diaz does not throw a ton of strikes will that ever catch up to him it seems like it's going to catch up to him at some point and it caught up to him today. I will say I'm going to give him an asterisk. I'm not going to harbor. I'm not going to. I'm not going to belabor over this. I'm not going to harp on it a bunch. I don't want to be that guy all the time. I'm not even really here to say like I told you so. There's a whole season to go. Maybe it'll work out in the opposite favor at some point. But he did get a weak ground ball that was rolled over on that you would that you would traditionally see a double play on. If that was a double play, guess what? We'd all be happy and and we'd be talking about how the team's great and. Alexa Diaz is fine. Yeah, he struggled, but he got out of it. You know, that's what he always does. So I just want to put that asterisk in there, but there's no doubt. There's more to this game than just the ninth. But let's face it. You have a job on a team to close games out, and when it's a two-run lead against a team as bad as the Nationals, you should convert that. I don't, obviously, they're human, but that one, this one's going to sting for a little while. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't, you know, if you, I don't think we should make too much out of Diaz, but there was plenty of signs to be concerned about Diaz before. We shouldn't make too much about this individual game. Right. Because like you said, I mean, it's a game of inches and you have a totally different narrative if, if you get that ground ball. But there was plenty of concerning things with Alexis Diaz before the first pitch today. Yeah, and listen, I know people are going to complain about C.B. Buckner. I, I, he, he was bad. I, we all know he was bad, but he was bad for both sides. So I, I can't sit here and suggest that's the only reason. I also thought, you know, to stay on that mojo a little bit, I thought Ellie was safe earlier in the game on the steal. Yeah, but we all know. We all know how that goes. Uh, if it's, if it's even, it's even, if it's even remotely close, remotely close, the call's going to stand. Uh, so I knew that already going into the replay. Uh, that's where we're at. So, uh, a lot happened towards the end of the game, Nick. So, usually you're probably well prepared, have a good box score recap, but uh, run us through it. We got a pretty graphic. That's about it. Uh, I'll, I'll try to run through the best I can. Uh, still trying to update things to our, our new system, but we'll get rolling as we uh, Sunday. Sunday was the uh, the benchmark. You to give us a, till Sunday. A, a, a clean show, so we'll roll through it. All right, it was a nothing nothing game going into the fourth inning. Reds actually had a, a really good chance earlier in the game, uh, but Jesse Winker of all people uh, threw out Santiago Espinal on the play uh, on a hard hit single by Stuart Fairchild. Uh, Nats got on the board uh, first in the top of the fourth. Fourth, uh, Kbert Ruiz singled. Uh, it was a pop-up that, that kind of was a little bit in no man's land. Fairchild playing center field probably should have called off Ellie De La Cruz. Ellie De La Cruz probably should have backed off. I'll ask Trace's thoughts on that in a little bit. Uh, bottom of the fourth, though, Jamer Candelario, he homered his first home run as a red to tie the game. Uh, top of the fifth, Nats got a run back on a sack fly. Uh, that would do it for uh, Hunter Green. He uh, finished four and two-thirds innings, five hits, two earned runs, four walks, seven strikeouts. We'll, of course, get into Hunter a little more later on. Uh, bottom of the fifth, Luke Maley hit a two-run home run, scoring Stuart Fairchild, put the Reds back up 3-2. Uh, Jonathan India, RBI single, gave the Reds some insurance. They were up 4-2. Um, but Capert Ruiz, he hit a two-run homer to tie the game off of, uh, of um, Lucas Sims. Then Nick Martini, he had what we thought was the big hit of the day, a two-RBI double in the eighth, put the Reds up 6-4. But then you just saw Alexis Diaz really struggle in the ninth. Uh, Nats put up three runs in the ninth off Diaz. Reds lose seven to six. Now one and one on the young season. All right, let's get into it. Uh, the main talk, most likely, um, as, and, and I think it's justified as it should be around this game is going to be Alexis Diaz and what you know what we make of it. 
Listen, I know people are going to try to crush David Bell for this. I, I, if you want to say that he left Bell or he, Bell gave Diaz too much time to sit in there, maybe. I, okay, maybe. But here's the problem with that is that you have a guy that has shown the same type of, of, of song and dance before. Diaz has walked guys before, and then he gets himself out of trouble, and he's, and he's done that for such a long time and been successful at it that you can't... Uh, David Bell, you can't expect him, in my opinion, the first time out to not at least show some confidence to Diaz. Now, listen, if we want to get upset and he continues to run Diaz out there, and this happens time and time and time again, then I think that there's some merit to the idea of getting on Bell. But I'll be honest, I don't... Diaz has to do his job. Like, that's his job. And and if you want to blame somebody, and that makes you feel better, I don't think there's anywhere else to blame if you're going to try to blame Bell versus Diaz than Diaz. He's got to throw strikes. And as I said before, maybe a little bit of bad luck because he got a, he got a rolled over ground ball. But, but again, like... This was our concern all along with Alexis Diaz. At some point, major leagues are going to catch up to you, and you're not going to keep being able to dance around the fire and not get burnt if you continue to walk guys. Like, and he has he has consistently done this now, uh, at least probably since what dating back to a couple weeks after the All Star break last year. Um, I mean, you can even say his career, maybe, but I but. I don't know how far you want to go back. I'm just trying to be somewhat. I don't want to kill Diaz too much. He's been a good arm. He's been a he's been a fantastic arm out of the bullpen. He's been a good closer. He's a young player. Well, let's face it. Today, he just didn't get the job done. Well, to your point about how you know you have to leave him in because he's been able to get out of jams before, and you have to show some confidence on him on opening day. Alexis Diaz did not blow his first save until June 30th last year. So I pulled up the game logs from. Uh, the start of the season till June 30th, he was still walking 4.9 batters per nine innings, even during that span where he didn't blow a single save. So walks have always been a problem. He has been able to get out of it a lot of a lot of times. Uh, it's it's hard to know will will he be able to to do it. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of closers that have been able to do it. There's a lot of closers that eventually caught up with them. It's really hard to project which way it goes with him. Um, but you were hoping he had a really bad spring. I, the, the easy talking point is, well, you know, closers need the adrenaline, and when the lights come on, it'll be fine. Well, number one, it didn't work. Have to see a little bit more. But, look, there's a lot of really good arms in this bullpen. So right. uh, it's it's a fine line of, of being patient and trusting your guys, your all-star closer last year, versus a guy like Fernando Cruz. I know he gave up a run today, but, my God, he looked really, really good today as well. Yeah, I mean, give Suter some credit as well. I don't want to blow past him. I know we're probably going to move on to some other topics of conversation. He's, he, his name probably won't get brought up after this, but he, he came in and did as, as good of a job as he possibly could have. You couple that with the fact of what he did on opening day, and you never know. Maybe maybe he's a guy that you, you didn't know what you had when you brought him in. He kind of felt like a good hometown addition type piece and uh, more of a veteran arm in the bullpen, and all of a sudden he becomes the guy. I don't know. But right now, certainly... The uh, the confidence that we have in Diaz when he comes out of the pen is not going to be nowhere near as high as it used to be, rightfully so. And it'll be it'll be interesting to see how Bell handles that moving forward, because I do think that there's some people that that right now are frustrated because Bell left him in as long as he did, because it does look like you could have argued, Nick. All right, he doesn't have it. He's all over the place. He's this isn't going to get figured out. Let's see if we can't try to save him before he's completely drowned. The issue I have is that. He's just found a way to Houdini act this before, and you got to give him you got to give him the chance to to basically um, bury himself before we decide to bury him per se. All right, uh, moving forward here, you have Green on here, you have Bad D together. I think that goes hand in hand. Uh, again, for those that that didn't get a chance to 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 listen before the the game ended, I didn't get a chance to watch uh, a ton of Hunter throw. I did get a chance to see the inning in which you know we were basically dropping pop-ups there in short center field. And I thought he did an excellent job of not letting that rattle him and making good pitches of damage control in that inning, Nick. Yeah, I mean, overall, I, I don't, it wasn't a, a performance that that you're going to put on his career highlights, but I thought he was fine. Uh, 
if, if he had some better defense behind him, he probably gets through maybe six innings, at least more than, than four and two thirds. Interesting thing with green today is, uh, he threw his slider 51, 51 times right. through his uh, 14 fastball, 43 times through his splitter only six times. And we didn't see anything else. So, um, but he, he was really effective. It, it just the, if there's something you want to be mad about David Bell on, this is the, there's two things that stand out to me and I, I'm kind of jumping, but, uh, it kind of goes to yeah, hand go in hand with where we're at. The, the first is I think Bubba Thompson should have been playing center field, uh, today. I know Will Benson had, had got on base twice and had a, did have a, uh, his, the hardest hit ball he's ever hit of his career against Patrick Corbin. Uh, but defense matters, and this team is just, it feels like they are just completely throwing defense to the wayside because they're down McLean and Friedel, and I don't agree with that. I think Bubba Thompson should have been center field. I think Bubba Thompson makes that catch, and you put Stuart Fairchild in the in right field, and you put Stuart Fairchild in a position he's going to be better at as well. Uh, and then the other thing was uh, was Jake Freely. I, I don't understand the usage there. You brought in Nick Martini to pinch hit. I don't, is Nick Martini that bad in the outfield? Um, that uh, that he couldn't go out for for an inning because then you don't have Jake Frilly. Jake Frilly never got an at bat in this game, and you were in the ninth inning in a one run game, um, and against a right handed pitcher, and you didn't have your, I think your best bat against right handed pitching. Yeah, no, it's more than a fair point. I seen the play we're talking about right now. And people are going to hate me for saying this. I just don't know who... I don't know if there's a ton of blame to go around on a ball like that. I I, I know people are going to crush me for saying that. I get... I would love in a perfect world, Stuart Fairchild, to be racing in, calling everybody off, making the catch. But if we're being honest as well, I think Stuart was under the impression, and rightfully so, maybe. I'm just trying to play this out. Ellie has a Ellie has an unbelievable arm. It kind of looked like Ellie was probably going to get under that ball, but I think Ellie kind of misread how far it was going to drift back into the outfield, and he just never got a chance to sprint back there and get underneath it. In a perfect world, though, to be very clear, Stewart comes up and he makes that catch, but I just don't, I don't know if it's like you, got, you can crush any of them, if that makes sense. I think that there's reasonable rationale on all the fronts of why everybody acted the way they did. And it's just an unfortunate thing that happened. And, and, and we've talked about this before. I mean, our defense is terrible out there. I, I, I don't know how else to say it. it it's just bad. Like, TJ Friedel going down. And, I, and I, I'm not trying to be, like, super toxic today, okay? I, I'm, I'm, it's one game. But, like, when you lose Matt McClain and you lose TJ Friedel, this is what you get. This is what you get. You got a second baseman out there with a head up his ass who decides he just he's just going to play La La Land. Ball's landing right in front of second base, and Espinal's just staring at CES. CES is like 240 pounds, bro. You're out there. You, if you weigh 150 pounds and you play the infield, you don't look over at the guy that weighs 250 pounds to make the play. Ever. You don't do that. That's like the point guard catching a rebound and outlet it right to the guy that's six foot nine. Like You just... Use your brain. You you got put in the lineup today, Espinal, just so you know, because you play defense, brother. I don't know. It's only one game, but when you don't have Matt McClain and you don't have TJ Friedel, this is what we're exposed to. And, I, and there were so many things that happened today. And my God, I missed like three or four innings. Who knows what I missed? I don't even know. Like I could have missed other things. But the baseball that I seen today, they didn't deserve to win. And in fact, if you, wanna, if you want an optimistic output on today's game, is that, you know, when you leave the ball yard, sometimes you're like, you know, we played really well. The Braves series, per se, per se right? Like last year, you yeah, lost, yeah. you lose two out of three games, Nick, and you leave the park every day when you lost, and you think, damn, we could have, like, we played great. We just lost. Today, at least you know you don't have to feel that way. You, you, you can almost look around at everybody and think, well, they could have done something better. Uh, it was that bad, but I digress. I'm not trying to get this upset on game two of 162, to be clear. But I also know what's coming around in May. Um, and again, I'm not trying to get ahead of ourselves, but I know what the gauntlet looks like in May. I'm trying to stack up the wins here so we can possibly, you know, give ourselves some wiggle room for air in May. But uh, otherwise, do you have anything else to add on the, on the, on the, I mean, Hunter Green, you got to see him throw more, more, more or less. People are still in the chat saying he's not elite. Do you make anything of that? 
I mean, I, he walked too many guys today. I mean, you don't want to see him ever walk four guys. I mean, other than that, um, other than a couple couple bad walks, there was one leadoff walk that I think came around to score, and that one really, really hurt. Other than that, I thought he, he threw the ball pretty well. Um, you know, seven strikeouts. He's he's uh, it just it's it's really hard to judge a start like this when there was such bad defense behind him. When when you know if if he right. goes. Another inning and a half, the line looks completely different, and there's not a single person complaining about Hunter Green. So it's just the defense is is terrible. It was my biggest concern coming into the year. This was like my night year nightmare. I thought, thank God it didn't happen on opening day when everyone's eyeballs balls are on the right. head. This could good thing even, we good thing my, we could hide this least, thing behind Bally Sports. Golly, yeah, imagine least, you imagine this being on the WLWT, this joke of a game. Yeah. Good God. <laughs> Good thing we can hide it behind all the, the 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 cable packages. I don't know, not to cut you off, but you make a good point. Well, I, yeah, it's uh, it's the it's hopefully, hopefully it just isn't gonna really kill this team. You know, you know it's gonna hurt the team, but how much is it gonna hurt the team? It's hard to know because, uh, you know, defense is one of those things where it's all about the opportunities, and you know, you you can hide really bad defenses for a couple weeks yeah. um and it doesn't you can it can all come roaring in one or two games uh it just it, it's so much as is could you know dependent on right you know where the balls are hit and all those kind of things so yeah uh it's definitely a concern you just have to, to hope and, and pray that you're able to to find until tj friedel gets in there more but i do think if your defense is this bad you got to play like guys like like Bubba Thompson and probably even Santiago Espinal more at second base, even as bad as he looked today. He's not a bad defender. He just had a really bad day. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, the, the, the unfortunate part is, again, we don't get these guys for their entire career. We get them for, you know, four or five months out of their entire career. We'll see how long Espinal is around. Um, we'll find out. All right, uh, on to some better news, I guess. Uh, Martini, Candy, Maley. Uh, Martini, let's not look over it. I, the dude, what a, I mean, a, a big time hit, a big time hit drove in, uh, what he drove in two on a triple there in the, uh, the bottom of the eighth inning. You thought that was kind of the, uh, you thought that was the Martini kiss and he was going to be two for two on, on Reds victories. If you will, turns out that that got ruined. Candy finally got on the board there and Maley is on the board as well. So your overall thoughts on those three guys. Nate Martini's a good hitter, man. I, the guy, he's uh, he, clutch is so overrated, but man, he's had a lot of really, really big hits for this team in his like four months, three months on the team. Uh, nice to see Candelario. He also had a walk today, so he was on base twice. Uh, that pitch that he he hit out of the ballpark, he put a really good swing on it. The ball was coming into him, took it the other um, or, or pulled it uh, out. And then Luke Maley had an incredible spring. Um, had another good day at the plate today. Home run. Also had that walk that that kept the game alive in the ninth as well. So, uh, you know, good offensive days from from those guys. Reds put up six runs today. Just unfortunately wasn't enough. Yeah. Tough. I mean, it's a tough. It, it, let's just face it. It was a tough day at the ball yard. It was. That's what exactly what it was. All right. Uh, a couple things here, really quickly, before we get to uh, Reds MILB and uh, what's next. Um, Bryce Sizemore says, I know we aren't going to win them all, but today has to be a win. Nats are terrible. Have to beat bad teams. Yes, Bryce. Um, yeah, that's 100%. Ace Man said he lost. Said uh, Trace. I think he said Tracy, even though my name's Trace, to be clear. Uh, he said I lost $100. You lost I $100. Realized I, lost, I just realized I, I lost a little money on this yeah, game. Thanks for reminding me. I had a... I had a uh, Ellie hitting money line. I thought I was I was like feeling that was good. So tough one. And I lost my brain cells. <laughs> can 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 some um, say that's worth more. We shall find out. Uh, all right, let's do Reds MILB and let's do what's next, and then uh, then we'll get into maybe some some kind of post rundown talk. Go ahead, Nick. Well, a little bit more exciting. Uh, Louisville Bats. They. Uh, Started the season 2-0, had a 4-3 win over the Indianapolis Indians. That is the Pirates AAA affiliate. Michael Trotwine hit a walk-off home run for the win. Uh, Reds were going up against Paul Skeens. He was absolutely dominant, but only pitched, I think, three innings. I don't think the Reds got a, or the, the Bats got a hit off him, but 
Reese Hines, two two games, two home runs. That's a guy. He it's a it's a matter of time before uh, he's in the major leagues. I think um, he's a guy that I think could really be at least a really good platoon option for the Reds. Uh, Blake Dunn was 0 for four. Uh, Herderbees was on base twice. Um, then Lyon Richardson. He had a pretty strong outing. Did walk three batters, but uh, didn't give up a run over five innings. Struck out four. So uh, good to see uh, Lyon Richardson. You know, just pro- continuing to provide some um, some good depth uh, for the Reds uh, starting pitching wise. Uh, if you're wondering, the rest of the Reds minor league affiliates they will all start next Friday. Um, all three other teams start. All right, uh, tomorrow Nick Martinez will make his Reds debut. Uh, looking forward to that. He had an incredible spring. Um, looking to um, uh, see what he can do uh, here. And his his debut with the Reds was going up against Jake Irvin, uh, a guy that was uh, okay for the Nats last year. But look, this is a uh, this is a game tomorrow, Trace, where you 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 need to try to find a way to win, and you you, you never you never apologize for winning series, even when they're they're ugly, even when you have a game before that you should have won. The name of the game is really is is winning series. So hope that the Reds can get it done tomorrow. I agree. I agree. I mean, you can't come into any series and expect to sweep. So if you bounce back tomorrow, you find a way to win. I guess you move on and you and you hold your held high, knowing that you probably should have swept, but that's not the case. Water under the bridge. Um, you know, like I said before, it is one of one sixty two. But they all matter. They really all matter. Um, we'll find out at the end of the year. Hopefully this team gets themselves in a position where they can fight for a postseason playoff spot. And uh, hopefully we can look back and just say that was that was one of the games we let slip away, but we got lucky in XYZ game and they all even out. But we'll try to tell ourselves as we go to bed tonight. But Nick, um, any final, I guess, parting thoughts on a losing edition of Chatterbox Reds? Oh, just I don't know. It's just it's one of those games you you hope that uh, the the pendulum swings the other way and you know you win some of these games that you shouldn't have won. Uh, you didn't deserve to, you know, or you know that 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 you were kind of behind the whole game like like the Nats were. But uh, to a lot of people that 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 mentioned um, last year, the Reds had a really good record in one run games, um, and that was a concern this year that 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 would even back out. Look, this is. Uh, uh, this is not, not a good start for that. So, um, but, uh, I don't know, just a tough, tough one today and hopefully they can bounce back tomorrow. All right. I got something in real time we're making for everybody. Okay. Um, we're going to say analytics. Here we go. Ready? D hold on DP. And I just wanted to understand this is actually a win. All right. Uh, here we go, everybody. Right. On, no free ads. No free ads. But on the back of a, uh, uh, um, you know, a uh, company that makes gum. <laughs> just so we're on the same page, everybody. You know, you know where they stand. They stood for like 100 years. When you're trying to turn a double play, not good enough. Not good enough this day and age. What did it turn out to be? Uh, Nick, do me a favor. You have Statcast up? Of uh, obviously, I think it has a permanent Thank you. hole in my tab. Yeah, it probably it's probably uh, you probably got a burn mark of it. You turn your computer off, it still yeah. has Statcast on there. Do me a favor. Avant. Yeah, let let let, let me, let's Savant uh, let so let's Savant tell the people. Uh, I want you to know. I want to know how hard that 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 single was uh, in the ninth inning, and I wanted the expected batting average of that single. This this will be good. This is how I want to end the show tonight. That it was actually hit. It's actually considered a hard hit ball. It was ninety five point six miles per hour, so it's barely the threshold is ninety five. Uh, Two ninety expected batting average. I don't so. believe it. The analytic guys are sticking together. They found a way to manipulate that. <laughs> That ball was hit. That ball was hit like twenty miles an hour. I don't believe what you just said. I got to go back and look at that. I mean, you're telling me that was a hard hit ball. I don't know. Is it what? It was a hard hit into the dirt. Is that what we're talking about? By the time it got to Elliot, I think it was it going forty have, miles an hour. It did have a negative two launch angle. All right, whatever. I like. But Chad, I'm gonna need your. I'm gonna need your help because a lot of times 
<laughs> when the shift works with a double play, you don't even notice it. Oh, you, you don't, don't notice, notice it. it. Yeah, you don't even, you don't notice, even notice it. it. You, you only notice it when it doesn't work. So I'm going to need your help. Let me know. I, I want you to tweet me anytime there's a, a double play with the sh that that with, with their when they're shifted. It, well, what's the regulations of this? Are we talking what? like like where does where does the shortstop have to be standing for it to count as a a successful shift double play? Um, okay, I that I think that's a very fair point. That's a very fair point. Hold on, in real time, we'll do this together again. You ready? All right. Uh, but, are, but are we? But we also we're also. Like if there's a if there are a double play depth and there's a a hard hit line drive that goes right into the shift that's not a double play but yeah. like those aren't going to get credit for either so this is not going to be a perfect science. All right, um, not going to see how see how these guys see how this all works. We're throwing in a bunch of parameters. Uh, this is my final final putting thought. I know this is really high tech. Whoa, whoa, whoa I got turned that way. <laughs> Uh, double play depth, uh, if you need to look it up, you can Google it. But uh, there's a second base bag. Usually they stand, you know, we'll call it 10 to 15 feet just on each side of that. Um, that's where they do, stand. Do I, get a, do, I, do I get a half a point for any hard hit outs when they're uh, not a double play depth, when they could be turning a double play? Um, okay. Yeah, well... That's a good. That's a fair point. If they hit a ball when Jonathan India is playing like in the right field stands, and it's not Jonathan India's fault, he's told to stand there. Let's just say they hit a ball. Let's just say they hit a ball really hard to the right side, and they throw the ball to second, and they get that out instead of a double play. I will give that to you, but I want you to know that doesn't count until you get the next out because because that's how it would work. You got to get one more out because you didn't save anything. So it's a full, it's a full one, but they have to get the next out. Just get one more out, and I'll live with that. That's fine. But if the next guy right, walks right. up and hits a home run, it wouldn't have mattered anyways. It, it kind of would have, to be honest with you. But we're getting into the weeds here. We're trying to make ourselves feel better. It is what it is. I love Nick. Nick loves me. I'm okay with the analytics, uh, kind of. But I got to be honest. When a guy rolls over a ground ball, it looks like the game should be over. Sometimes you gotta I'm gonna, brag you, about it. You know what I'm gonna, you know what I'm, you know what I'm gonna do. One of the off days, I'm gonna find someone that's like a major league baseball data scientist and see if they I would love it. An actual get them on the show. Explanation for this, because I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I just assume that they know what they're doing on this. One. Exactly, you assume they know what they're I, doing, and that's. Uh, I, admit, and, I, admit, and, and, I admit, I'll tell you, we, I I'll tell you, we, I'll tell you what we did do as well. Not too long ago in this country, we assumed there was a lot of experts that knew what they were doing. Nick, they knew what they were talking about. Look at them; they're the experts. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> Be careful. All right, we're going around a rabbit hole. Enjoy your Easter, everybody. Nick, are we doing a show tomorrow? If we're not, if we're not going to do a show right after the game tomorrow for for family festivities, we'll figure all that out. I know my wife has plans, etc. We will do a show. We will do a show. Uh, and if Nick can do it, we'll do a show at least at the end of the night, kind of like when the kids go down to bed. We could at least do that. Yes. Yes, we can do that. that okay. For me. I think we'll be able to do that tomorrow, Easter. Got a bunch of family plans, uh, so I don't want to, again, on the third day of the season, I already get myself in hot waters. Uh, but I will say I do appreciate all of you guys tuning into a, a game in which we are all sad about. We are all sad about, and uh, we'll find a way to win hopefully tomorrow. So we'll see you about 9.30 p.m.? Um, yeah, ballpark, I think. Somewhere around that ballpark. I, I like, I like, the, I like the, when you the, say ballpark. The cool thing is... The cool thing is, though, folks, if you subscribe to Chatterbox Sports right. on YouTube and you hit the bell up in the top right corner and you turn on notifications, you will be notified anytime we go live. Right. But when I schedule when I schedule it on on um on YouTube tomorrow, I'll put in the chat and I'll pin it what time we're estimating to start the show. Perfect. So it all it also save the time on there too. So, but yeah. Yep. Well, that time of the show where. <laughs> We got to send it away. Do me a favor. If you haven't done so already, I need you to do me a big favor. I need you to go and you download Chatterbox Reds and give us a five-star review. All right? Do that. That'll make us feel a little bit better. Not a lot, but a little. That's all I need right now is just a little bit of help. So, from the bottom of my heart to yours, enjoy.
Enjoy your Easter, everybody. Enjoy your Easter. And most importantly, go Reds. <laughs>